Welcome. I'm Sebastian Mafud, and you're listening to WCAT Radio, the on-air wing of En Route Books and Media, bringing you the dulcet sounds of Catholic wisdom. Hello, dear radio audience of WCAT Radio. My name is Dr. Rhonda Chervin. I'm a retired professor of philosophy and one of the founding people of this radio show. And I'm very happy today to be interviewing an absolutely terrific writer, Dawn Eden, her name is, and she's the author of several books, but the one I want to talk about today is called The Thrill of the Chaste, Finding Fulfillment While Keeping Your Clothes On. So that's not chaste, but chaste. And I find the title just remarkable because the funniness of it, finding fulfillment while keeping your clothes on, I think is so important for bringing in readers who perhaps are not chaste and can hardly believe it that anyone would write such a book. So um, Dawn, would you first tell us something about um, how before Dawn is a convert from, first of all, a Jewish background, then she was a born-again Christian for a while and then became a Catholic. And before her conversion, you looked for love and sexual relationship. Now, you know, if it was pleasurable, why would it be wrong? That's the most basic question. Well, that's a great question, Dr. Rhonda. And first of all, thank you so much for having me on on your show. And it's 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 wonder it's wonderful speaking with you. Very often, when people hear my story, they ask me if I've heard of you because you're a you're a fellow convert to Catholicism from Judaism, who's also written autobiographically uh, about your own experience of conversion. Uh, just so listeners know, um, I, 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 although I've in the past written books, including The Thrill of the Chaste under the pen name Dawn Eden, uh, my full legal name is Dawn Eden Goldstein, and I've actually gone back to using the Goldstein. So if people see a Dawn Eden Goldstein on the web, you know, as they search for me, they'll know it's, it's the same person. Um, so your, your, your question, which is wonderful, is, you know, if something's pleasurable, how can it be, be wrong uh, with respect to, like, having, engaging in a, in a sexual relationship outside of, uh, of the uh, commitment of, of married life? Well, you know, this is something which I had to learn as a convert first to Christianity and then to Catholicism. I had to learn how to be chaste, how to uh, refrain as a single person, re- refrain from uh, having uh, sexual relationships. Um, and and um, it's, it's, uh, it, it was certainly something that I learned experientially in terms of learning from living the Catholic life why it is that the church asks people or invites people to reserve sex for marriage. And what I found was that there's a difference, Dr. Ron, and I'm sure you know this well as one who's studied and taught Aristotle, uh, there's a difference between pleasure and joy, or as Aristotle would put it, uh, eudaimonia, the the, the true happiness. Um, There are certain things that give us pleasure in the short term that don't lead ultimately to to, uh, happiness. And uh, certainly uh, engaging in what is really the marital act outside of the commitment of marriage is one of those things. It gives pleasure in the short term, but it doesn't conduce to being happy in in the long term. Whereas 
the vowed commitment of marriage, um, it, it, um, it, it gives, it enables us to have both the, um, both the short-term pleasure of engaging in sex in marriage, but also a, a joy that lasts even when one is not engaging in sex, even because most of our lives we're not doing that. And also the joy of the commitment of marriage lasts even um, when we're no longer able to engage in sex. And uh, more, th- more than that, um, there's something about the commitment of marriage and the gift of self uh, that uh, enables us to um, learn how to grow with another person in a way so that uh, there's a, a greater depth to, to our, our joy. Whereas if we develop the habit of having sex outside of marriage, we lose the ability ultimately to connect with people and to receive that, um, that joy that comes from a deep commit, the, the connection that comes with a deep lifelong commitment. Well, um, and I love the, how you put that, Dawn. Uh, what I'd like to Thank ask you. is suppose a single woman is listening to this or a single man and is saying, well, I've been looking for the perfect person to marry for 10 years since puberty. I don't find the person who I want to marry, even though I think I have and it never works out. And in the meantime, how can I, how can I possibly be chased it by saying, you know, don't eat unless you can eat healthy foods and you don't have any healthy foods. Well, you know, I, I, I think, um, I, I think, you know, one, one way, one way to, to think about, uh, about that is, is that, is that um, there's um, certainly a difference between the uh, sexual act and, and, and eating you know we we lived fine when we were when we were kids without uh engaging in this in the sexual act it's it's it, and and as as adults towards the end of our lives we'll also be quite satisfied not engaging in it so it's really you know something that is um not necessary for our living or even uh thriving the way that food is is absolutely necessary what is necessary is being a sexual person and in fact there is a difference between being a sexual person in terms of what that consists of and having sex you know some of the people who um have the most uh sex outside of marriage are not really sexual persons like i wouldn't say that hugh hefner was a sexual person. You see him in the pictures of the late Hugh Hefner, uh, founder of Playboy magazine, in his smoking jacket. And um, he looks almost pre-sexual, like a boy who never uh, grew, grew up, um, or even asexual. He, he doesn't look erotic. He looks just sad. And um, there's there's a, a movie which you know I rec- I recommend even though it's not a Catholic movie and there's a lot in it that I think probably earned an offense an offensive rating from the U S bishops but there's a movie that has an ultimately Catholic message uh, about that called Carnal Knowledge directed by Mike Nichols which is about a man who who avoids the commitment of of marriage and sets about to simply have have um uncommitted sex and to use women and you see at the very end of the film that um he's no longer this kind of stud he's gotten so um burned out that he's um not able to even um sexually really connect with with a woman because he's just put the goal on sex rather than on on um personal connection and commitment whereas you know for myself uh, as a single uh woman um when i began to 
seek to live chastely, I found that I was actually able to be more of a woman than when I was uh, seeking love in sexual relationships outside of marriage uh, because I could learn how to truly love as a woman uh, through um, being chaste. I could learn how to truly love my sister as her sister. I could learn how to truly love my mom and dad as their daughter. I could learn how to truly love friends as a female friend. And uh, when we think about it, um, when are we most a woman or for those who are men, most a men? Well, we're most human when we're virtuous. And, you know, virtuous, virtuosity or virtuous living, I should say, is something that um, makes us more of what we are and what we are, you know, are, you know, at base, you know, a, a woman or, or a man. Um, so, you know, I've discovered much more about my feminine identity uh, by, through loving appropriately in a chaste way than I ever, I've discovered more than I ever knew about my fe- feminine identity than when I was just trying to really sell myself short through, um, through uh, relation, sexual relationships that weren't, um, that weren't truly love. In, in my book, Feminine Free and Faithful, which I wrote on the subject of femininity, I have a whole section about how, in a certain way, trying to have sex with no babies and no husband is like a woman trying to be like a man who can have sex without having a baby in his body, see? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's really not trying to be feminine at all. It's trying to be masculine in a certain way. Right, right. But um, in the book, you have a chapter called Gaining self-control without losing your mind. Could you just say a few words about that? Sure. Well, gaining self-control without losing your, losing your mind um, really has to, has to do with, with uh, understanding chastity as a virtue. Now, before I was Catholic, I had a limited understanding of chastity. I thought that it simply meant abstinence, not having sex. And it's really hard just to practice a negative when, when you're thinking like, okay, I have to get up in the morning and not have sex. I have to go out you know, in, in the world and not have sex. I have to go to bed and not have sex. You know, it, it just sounds like, like, um, like a, um, a deprivation, a lack. And what really helped me to live chastely was discovering that chastity is a virtue. And like every virtue, it's not merely something negative. Uh, Virtues are always positive. Virtues are always strengths, things that enable us to do things that we wouldn't be able to do otherwise. My friend Parikh Meyer, whom I quote in The Thrill of the Chaste, uh, says that Chastity is the virtue that enables us to love fully, uh, in, in, fully and, and you know, completely in the manner that's, how can I, let me rephrase it. Chastity is the virtue that enables us to love fully in every relationship in the manner that's appropriate to the relationship. So, you know, in terms of, Sexual activity, um, that would be part of the full living of the marital relationship. And, it would, and that would be the only relationship in which sexual uh, intercourse is, is appropriate. But chastity also enables me to love fully in, in the relationship that I have with my, with my family. Chastity enables me to love fully as a friend, as it enables me to fully, you know, love the stranger in the manner that's uh, appropriate to that relationship. And when I started to think about that, that chastity wasn't 
um, so frustrating, um, and it wasn't boring. It became something that was exciting because I started to look at every encounter as a challenge in terms of how can I love in the fullest and most appropriate um, manner, you know, in this relationship, in this encounter. Now, Dawn, in the book, um, you, I was very surprised because I didn't know that when I had been reading about the book originally because it's such a popular book and I had heard about it. I didn't realize that after you became a Catholic, first you were looking for a husband, but then you reached the point of desiring to make a private promise of consecration to Jesus and That's right. not to look forward to a sexual relationship with a husband. Why did you, can you just talk about that for a few minutes? Sure. Well, you know, what I came to see was that I had this wrong idea, which was that um, because I had been unchaste, that Therefore, God didn't want me to consecrate myself or dedicate my chastity uh, to him. And uh, I learned over time that God meets us where we are and he desires us to give ourselves to him in the way that we've discerned he's calling us, you know, as we are. So... There's no point in our lives where, if we're single, that is, if we haven't already made a lifetime commitment to another person, if we're single, there's no point in our lives where we can say, well, if God hasn't called me to dedicate my celibacy to, to him, you know, it's too late now. As long as we're single, there's always the um, opportunity for us to discern celibacy um, because you know it, it could it could really be that God is calling us to this higher state of perfection um, perfection not meaning now I'm perfect there's nothing more to do but rather that this is how God wishes to as using the verb perfect this is how God wishes to perfect me to draw me closer to him and 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 that's what I discovered that in fact God really had wanted me for himself to be exclusively dedicated to him all along. And now I thank God that I have the opportunity to do that through my private promise. Well, you know, you, people don't realize this, but if you're a single person, even if you were uh, divorced, um, annulled, if the marriage was annulled, or if you're a widow, or if you're, um, well, let's say a single person, you can make a private promise to be consecrated to Jesus, and it doesn't mean you're in a religious community. You right. make it to the priest. And I did that as a widow. I'm a dedicated widow, I call it. And my experience is that it really is a different mansion in the kingdom. You know, that it's yes. just different. You feel different. When in the back of your mind, you're not looking for a husband. <laughs> yes, that's lovely. right. You know, even it's if a relief. you're not, even as an old woman, and the church has always taught that the, the celibate life dedicated to Jesus is higher in itself. It's not higher for a person who should be married, like Thomas right. Moore. Thomas More wanted to be a monk, and they said he was too nervous to be a monk. Oh, wow. He married and had children, and then his wife died, and he married again. So in his case, God wanted him to be a married person. So then it's not higher for him to insist he's going to be a celibate. But in itself, they, the way it's described in the church documents is you have an undivided heart. And that fits beautiful with this wonderful book. Now, I want to repeat the title to you is the thrill of the chaste, finding fulfillment while keeping your clothes on, by Dawn Eden. And you can find these books, you may not realize it nowadays. All you do is you put in the title and the author's name, and it comes up where you can find the book. You just Google it that way. 
So that's Dawn Eden, the thrill of the chase, finding fulfillment while keeping your clothes on. I highly recommend it, if not for you yourself, the listener, because maybe you're a happily married person, but to give to anyone you know who rejects Catholic sexual ethics. It would be a tremendous gift. And that's published by Ave Maria Press. So, Dawn, would you like to end this session with a prayer? Um, yes, I, I, yes, certainly. And I'm just so grateful to, to, to you, Dr. Rhonda, for having me on, on your show and for uh, just letting your listeners know about, uh, uh, about my, my book. Um, and I, I wanted to mention also just that I have a new book out as well that's a good companion piece to the thrill of the chase and and you've uh, and and you've been so kind as to interme- interview me about that too um it's called sunday will never be the same a rock and roll journalist opens her ears to god so that's my conversion memoir that's also out now from from uh, catholic answers and that's that book sunday will never be the same is under my full name, Dawn Eden Goldstein. Um, you can also find me on Twitter at Dawn of Mercy. Um, and so uh, thanks, Dr. Rhonda. I'll, I'll, I'll be delighted to close us with a prayer uh, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Uh, dear, uh, d- dear Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we thank you so much for this time to discuss life in the Spirit and to discuss the joy that we have when we live chastely according to our state in life, Um, whether we're living married chastity within marriage, uh, which includes not only uh, sexual intercourse, but also fidelity, uh, or whether we're living single chastity. Uh, We thank God for the gift of our baptism that enables us and strengthens us to live uh, the life of virtue. Uh, And we ask you, Lord, to please um, strengthen in us the graces of our baptism so that we might always seek and do your, your will. And Lord, I ask your blessing on Dr. Rhonda and on her wonderful radio apostolate here on WCAT that she uh, may continue to draw listeners closer to uh, to you through the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, dear Dawn. And uh, Thank I you. assure you, this is not a boring book. This is such an interesting book. And, uh, you know, it's, um, we need books like this. We need the witness of people like this who are willing to expose themselves a little personally by talking about commitment in the past to sin and then what conversion can do and the grace that you can get as a convert to change your life, which I did in a similar way when I became a Catholic. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Dr. Rhonda. God bless you. Bless you. We hope you enjoyed the program and will join us back for another show on WCAT Radio. This is Sebastian Mafud. Good day.